Yeah. And I'm, I'm learning to shoot my gun and it's all new to me. And I still am at that point where I don't think I could shoot anyone even in self-defense. I don't know. But then I sat down on the couch because I want to go through this. I want to watch the first one. Well, I got the saw finally together. Uh, bar was bad and it kept breaking the chain, so I went to three different stores and finally did find a bar for it. So praise God for that. I'm thankful for that. But over there where that pot toner is, I've already loaded that wood into the pickup. Only got that wood there cut up too. Anyway, my plan is is hopefully tomorrow or Monday uh, to come back and uh, get this with the team of horses just as something fun to do. Sure glad the kids left their sleds when we were over here cutting it. I had to go get myself fixed and running and they left the sled behind so I'll use it to haul some wood to the pickup. So right now because it's 40 degrees and we've been having negative uh, zero degrees my tanks are all froze up so what I'm doing right now is I'm busting ice out of tanks so I can get water back into them and probably have them freeze up again. So this is so fabulous right now. It is 40 degrees. Can you believe that? We just came out of all of those cold days, like insanely cold days, and now it's 40 degrees. And it's showing several days of 40 degrees in the next, like the 10 day forecast. So it's gonna be in the 30s and 40s the next bit. And I'm elated. Like the goats, they wanted to come in today. Like they've been this last week like, no. No, I don't want to be milked today. No, I'm not. Just leave me alone. And today they were clamoring at the door like normal, saying, milk me. Oh, that's fabulous. I just, it makes me happy. Last night I was reading Mark 14, and that's where Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the disciples, you know, he says, wait, please help me, help me during this time. And, and he goes off to pray and then comes back and they're sleeping and that happened several times and Jesus is just tormented by what he knows is coming and then that's when the leading priests and Judas come and, and arrest him and Jesus says when they and then when they, he's in front of them he they ask who he is and he says I am and I will be seated at the right hand of my father and you'll see me coming on on the clouds of heaven or something like that. And that's actually um, him quoting Daniel, I think it's 713. And and that's when it says that um, the son of man will be coming on the clouds of heaven and and he will be given authority and dominion and he will, his rule will be eternal. Um, and, and that, that just is such a beautiful picture to me. I mean, that's why we're doing this, right? That's why we're fasting. And I, I keep getting messages and, um, emails and uh, messages on Instagram and, and then you've commented on the videos about who is joining us in this fast. And that's why we're doing this because of, I am, and his reign is eternal. He will be coming on the clouds of heaven. He, his return feels so close. And I, you know, I, I believe that, I, I guess, honestly, if I could vote, I guess, because I'm one of those that I, will, I won't camp on one view or thought or the other, because I don't know. I don't know. Um, about the the rapture like for 100 percent certain but i'm voting for and, and i i probably do lean towards that we will be raptured before the tribulation and and i'm i'm excited about that and then you know his reign and rule um is is then coming after that uh, for those who endure and I don't know. I just think, guys, it feels like it's so imminent and so close. And I don't know, just the way the world is right now. Um, <laughs> it just feels like 
Ah, Jesus is close. So I just want to encourage you to keep your eyes up, be looking up for his return, for for us to be caught up in the twinkling of an eye and all of that. Uh, I think as well, that's why I feel such urgency to to dig into this, to to do what we're doing and to talk about it more openly than I have because I really feel like I know a lot of people and I know there's lots of people out there that are lost and hurting and don't know the truth and and I, I that breaks my heart and you know you just think about how they're going to try to talk away the rapture you know millions of people disappear how are they going to explain that? And I've thought so many different things. Obviously, I don't know. This is just speculation. But, you know, they talk about, you know, they're talking about all the aliens. The aliens has become this huge thing now. And like, okay, so that'll be an easy way to explain it away. The alien, aliens abducted us, right? And so then the people that are left don't still don't have true answers. And I just, I want people to know the truth now. Um, but for those that are left, they need to know the truth then after as well, so that they can end their race well, knowing Jesus. They're actually wanting to get in. Olivia she just came in on her own, actually left the door open. I didn't mean to, it got stuck on the snow when I let Eva out. But she's coming in willingly now, huh? Because it's warmer and you feel better. She just jumped up on her own. I just got to finish milking little Opal here, and then I'll do Olivia. Look at this. Delight's laying there eating. Is that the epitome of laziness, or what? <laughs> wake up, Delight. Stretch and wake up. I need you. Come on, Delight. Don't ignore me. You're the last two. Why are you hiding in the corner? Why? Why? Am I going to torture you? Come on. Say, excuse me. That's how you use your manners. You stinker. You're a stinker. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come on. You are a stinker and all this way. You know what to do. No, you missed again. Okay, we got to get the door open. Here you go. Okay, let's go. Oh no, come on! So we gotta get this place cleaned up so it doesn't look ugly. Fiona, it's your turn. Can you come with me, please? Fiona, it's your turn. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, this must be the confessional. So, we have a gentleman that comes and gets milk from us and he's very much end times focused and prepper focused and be ready to defend yourself focused and I agree with all of it but like I've shared in previous videos and I'm, I'm learning to shoot my gun and it's all new to me and I still am at that point where I don't think I could shoot anyone even in self-defense I don't know I'm, I'm already emotional because this is hard. So, you know, we've been <clears throat> we've been in school learning about Nate Saint and how. And then yesterday, you know, I read the story or the part of the, their story where the Aka Indians they became Christians because they found out that. Those five missionaries had guns with them and they didn't use them and they didn't understand that. We never do know what can what will happen. So in a time of a tense situation, if my family was in danger, maybe I could defend them and kill somebody. But what if that person doesn't know Jesus? I would be sending them straight to hell. And the five missionaries, they willingly 
Holy cow. The five missionaries willingly laid down their lives. And out of it, like, the beauty that came out of that is just phenomenal. Because Jesus, because God, but God, you know, that, that but God. And I think that, yes, as we are all, all of us are heading towards the end times. I mean, every day we get closer, whether it's tomorrow, a year from now, or 500 years from now, we're, we're every day closer to that. And we're every day closer to our end because we don't know when our end is and we don't know what we'll face as we go on. I just think that these are things that we need to be thinking about. Do we just shoot because we can? And do we just... The bad guys come along and, and we just shoot them and feed them to the pigs like like it's nothing. Or there are it or what does Jesus want? And is it situation by situation that one person Jesus may be like shoot them. There's no hope for them. But the next person Jesus says, "Whoa, I need you to lay down your life because I'm going to do something amazing." And the reality is is we do. We've always just canned our food. We've always had food in our house. And yes, I have a slight bit more than normal, but not honestly that much. <laughs> but if somebody comes along and they're in need, am I going to turn them away? The Good Samaritan hated, well, the Samaritans hated Jews. But the Good Samaritan stopped for the Jew that was hurt on a road that was very dangerous. There was robbers along there all the time. So that Good Samaritan himself could have gotten robbed and killed, but he stopped to help somebody. So if somebody comes along that needs food, that needs water, that needs something, can I turn them along? People have told us that we're sitting ducks where we live here. In a perfect world, without the end time scenario of the world going crazy and everyone killing each other, so in the perfect world, we live in the perfect place. We're out of town. We can have all of our animals, but we're close enough to get to town in a split second. It means very quickly. Uh, but in an end of the world situation, we're sitting ducks, so to speak. But what would we do? What can we do? We don't have the finances to go and buy an off-grid property in the mountains. Um, and we're not called to be hermits or or even hoarders, or even anything, you know, we're, we're not called to go off and hide ourselves. There are so many examples, probably, I would say, I'm trying to even think, going through all the stories of the Bible, there, what you see in the Bible is provision from beginning to end, but you don't see God saying, I'm going to provide for you by giving you piles and piles of food on your shelves. I'm going to give you the same oil and the same flour that you've had all this time that you thought was going to run out, and I'm going to keep giving you more of that as you need it, and it will never run out. Just coming out of that conversation, I know that I'm not a hardened killer, that even if I can shoot my gun, the reality is, is that I probably wouldn't know in what situations to use it. These are the things I'm going to have to figure out. And, and Bill and I probably just need to sit down because we talked about the things that we share on YouTube. And I don't know. I don't have anything to hide. And I don't want to be known to be a person that is selfish and only thinks about myself and will kill at any cost. And probably what it comes down to so what does it look like in this day and age to lay your life down as a sacrifice for the sake of Christ? So there you have it, friends. <laughs> the Confessional by Delcy. I'd like to know your thoughts. I'd like to know what you think about this subject that I'm talking about. Because I don't think it's as clear and cut and dry as the conversation is that I came out of. And I'd like to know what you think. So I've been working on figuring out what's going to be on my shelves and how it should all look. It's harder than, it's hard to figure out what it should look like. So I want it to look nice, but be usable, and all of that. But I just wanted to say, 
this whole Nate Saint thing and reading through that has really got me to it's made me emotional and thinking a lot and so of course I as the kids are outside playing we're already done with school and and um, so while I'm working on this I've been listening to the story you know on I think it's on Amazon that's the end of the spear which is the story of Nate Saint and the four other missionaries and and so anyways it's just kind of fresh in my mind and, and really is getting me like it makes me just I don't know just emotional and think about all of life and it's just it's just amazing what Jesus does with sacrifice so I'm wondering if I should feel guilty but I finished working on the kitchen a bit and while I was doing that I finished watching End of the Spear hoofty doofty oh man one of the last things in the movie it says his life was not taken he gave it. Wow. It's a lot to think about. But then I sat down on the couch because I want to go through this. I want to watch the first one. So Bill is with the kids. I rarely get a day or half a day by myself. And it might not be for long. I mean, at any moment they may come in the door. But I want to dive into this. I'm so fascinated by it. Now, in the conversation with the gentleman that I told you a bit ago, he said that he doesn't believe in the rapture. <laughs> like I said, I don't know. Hi, kitty. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's that I want to believe in the rapture because it sounds like the best. Let's just get out of here and let, and let the world go crazy, right? <laughs> uh, but I just find it so fascinating that Jesus fulfilled the spring feast to the T. And so now we got fall feasts. And what does Jesus do but fulfill his promises and his word, right? And I'm just really curious to just see what, what this says and how it brings us all to light. So I'm going to dive in and watch some. And look at when it is. It's supposed to be on the morrow after the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it. The eighth. And what happened? Lazarus had just been supposed to be in two. You know, I, I don't believe that's what it goes to this. Now remember, this is the... I love note-taking Bibles. And they have room on each side to take notes. It's fabulous. This is fascinating. My quiet time has ended. The kids are here. I'm not sure I know the password to get in. Maybe I don't need a password. Do you guys just jump down or how do I get in? Gotta get in to get the hay for the goats. Do I just try to pet you maybe? I think that's what I try to do is I try to pet you and then, then you jump down, right? Is that the password? No? Well. Hey, I didn't say destroy the bale. I need in. They act like I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them, you wild birds. You're just wild. <laughs> I was proud of myself. This morning, I almost sent a, a text to Bill that was a little bit whiny and complaining, and I didn't because I was like, I'm not going to do that. I don't need to send something that's not meaningful or encouraging. I've also been thinking all day about what I talked about earlier, just the whole defending ourselves and what do you do about, you know, sharing you might have food. And so if the rapture doesn't happen and we're here for the long haul through the tribulation, whenever that may be, whether it's this year or 50 years from now, you know, if it gets as bad as what some people think, we're all doomed. Even if I could shoot one person from taking my food, there's 50, 100, a million more that are gonna come after it. I don't have enough ammo to keep them away. And most likely, if that really happened, we'd have to bug out and go on the run anyway. And at that point, we would be, you know, we'd be trusting God to provide for us every step of the way. 
which would probably be really good for our faith. <laughs> but the fact is, the food in my house wouldn't last anyone but just a short bit of time. And they'd move on to the next person anyway. And even us, it, it's not like if really things went south, it's not like it would last us forever either. And, you know, it's just... <sighs> I just truly am curious to know your thoughts about all of that. What would you do if it came down to that? And do you think that even if we hide everything and nobody knows, you know, we have a everything completely concealed, underground, whatever, um, that people aren't going, I mean, what, I guess, what do you think? What is, what is, What's gonna happen? What what would you do in certain situations uh, if people were attacking you for your food, or your animals, and and all of that? I'm curious to know because I've always thought it's good to have an emergency plan, to have things thought out. But when you don't know what's coming, it's hard to prepare for it. But I've been encouraged by you guys and your lovely comments um, and support, and I truly hope you've had a blessed day. And uh, that is if you've joined us in this fast or whatever it may be, even if you're just reading your Bible more or um, praying, praying more or just even just seeking even the littlest bit, I am encouraged and that is so wonderful. Uh, so I hope you've had a great day and um, that you are mightily blessed in all that you're doing and I'll see you tomorrow.